Hey there friends, Joy here with SubRosaTea.com. I am recording this a week before Easter. So of course I had eggs in my house. Of course I had lots and lots of tea. So I colored these eggs for Easter baskets. And I was thinking to myself, even if eggs aren't your thing or coloring for Easter is not your jam, you still might want to learn about the different ways that teas can color items like this. Um, you can color paper, you can color fabric, uh, obviously you can color eggs, but with a twist on that one. And of course, you can drink great quality tea too. So let's just dive in. Friends, if you're watching this part and there is no red live above my head, it simply means that you're watching it on the replay. Feel free to use the hashtag replay and shop away. If you are new here, my name is Joy. I'm the owner of Sub Rosa Tea. We're a very small tea company based in Northern Ohio. We will ship anywhere in the United States. As you can see, I picked a dozen flavors of tea and matcha. That's why there's 13. And we sell over 100. We sell over 100 flavors of loose leaf tea. We also sell blooming tea and matcha. We sell really great tea accessories and gift sets too. We'll ship anywhere in the U.S. If you're brand new to shopping with us this way, what I need you to do is comment the word register. You'll receive a one-time only Facebook notification via your messenger. Go ahead and fill that out and I will still be here. Don't you worry. Friends, if you are watching on Instagram or YouTube, the video is not interactive, but everything I'm talking about today can be purchased on our website. If you're watching it on Facebook, it is interactive in the way that you can either download our mobile shopping app or, again, type the word register. You'll get an account and you'll be able to see all of the great products that I'm talking about. I am going to talk about the loose leaf tea that I used. So I'm going to be talking about the tea, the type of tea, some other um, health benefits to the tea. And I'm going to be talking about the tea accessories because I literally had to grab every single teapot that I had in order to make 13 different uh, colored eggs all at one time. Friends, if you're here, please do leave me a comment. I would appreciate a hi. Um, let me know where you're watching from. I'd like to just know that we are connected. I've got two different screens going, one that helps me adjust the flavors that I'm talking about, and one helps me just basically on Facebook. I see at least one person's watching. Hey there, friends. Thank you. Thank you. What are you thinking? What's your favorite? Can you see them up close? Can you see the angles? I just think they are beautiful. They're completely gorgeous. I did use actual tea, and I also used Tisane's. We did also use matcha. So what are you thinking? What's your guess? Tell me, what's your favorite color? You like this blue one? Maybe this green. This is a beautiful turquoise color. And this one I actually rolled over mid color. So you can see different gradients. It is very bluish green. It is, I think it's my favorite. I don't know. Tell me, which one do you like? We've got yellow and brown. I did start with all white eggs, by the way, in case you were wondering about that. I did start with all white eggs. In the teapot here, we've got rooibos tea. This is what red rooibos tea looks like. I call it brown. I'm going to say this is brown, but it is definitely a beautiful tea to color um, eggs with. Hey there, Danielle from New Jersey. Thanks for watching. Hi, Miss Dawn. Do you have a favorite color? First off, if you are watching this, I do sell all the tea I'm going to be talking about. So we're going to be flipping through them on camera and you'll see comments. If you are watching on our mobile app, you'll see that I have all of the teas up in the queue in addition to all the tea accessories too, okay? So first off, we sell loose leaf tea. We also sell matcha, which is powder. That's, let's see, this one here is the matcha, but everything else is loose leaf tea. So these eggs in particular, I decided to color hard boiled eggs. You can use the tea dyeing method to color raw eggs. It's gonna work just the same, but because I was doing a video and I knew I'd be picking them up mul probably multiple times, I didn't wanna take the risk. Friends, if you are brand new here, I am a solo rider, okay? I do not have a film crew. There is no production staff. This is one single camera. You're not going to see different angles. I'm not going to produce an edited video. It is just me and the camera and a laptop in front of me. 
So that's why I'm trying to do things as efficiently as possible and show you them in stages. But it's another good reason not to use a raw egg because this is a live video and I certainly can't, um, if I were to drop it and it to get oak everywhere, <laughs> that would be gross. But you can do them with raw. Who's here has made hard boiled eggs. I'm telling you it is not hard, but I have a tip for you. I used to eat a lot of hard boiled eggs. I really don't anymore, but I used to, and I used to stop eating them if they didn't peel easily. That's kind of my jam. So I have a tip for how to hard boiled eggs and also how to make them in such a way that they will be easy peel even if you color them. So if you're interested in that, the big deal is, is you do need a stock pot that is big enough to cover all of your eggs in one layer plus one inch. That's how much water you need. Not any more than that. You do need to bring that water up to a boil and add two tablespoons baking soda and one teaspoon salt. Bring it to a rolling bubble with the lid on. Then carefully put your raw eggs into the boiling water. Put the lid on. Turn the heat down to low for 15 minutes. At that point, you're going to take your eggs out and put them into an ice bath. In the kitchen, what we call an ice bath is a stainless steel bowl that has really, really cold water and ice cubes floating in it. You're going to put your hot egg into that ice bath and pretty much walk away. The good news is about this method is you're going to do something similar with the tea. So the, the tea that I made every egg needs enough tea to cover it. So in this particular vessel, I could get two to three eggs in this vessel, which means I need far more than one cup of water. So I am going to need about a half ounce of tea. This one in particular is our cranberry harvest tea. It's not the one that's up on the screen right now. I know it's blue confetti, but it's not this one. Okay, so I used a half ounce of cranberry harvest in this Fuji glass teapot in two cups of water. Now, again, we're talking about tea dyeing our eggs. Let me grab this guy. This one is only one cup of water, but you can see it's a little more liquid than this. This is our insulated glass mug. It does come with an infuser basket that have the tea in it. So I steeped the tea, all 12 of these, well, 13 with the matcha, all of them had approximately a half ounce of loose leaf tea to one cup hot water, boiling water. I let that steep literally walk away. 30 minutes is totally fine. I My goal was to get the liquid down to room temperature. So for me, some of my vessels were closer to two cups. It took longer to get to room temperature. So the steep time was more like 45 minutes. This particular mug had the brew basket with the loose leaf tea in, so of course I removed that. I did add one tablespoon of distilled vinegar. I used white distilled vinegar, it's what I had. Um, I used one tablespoon of vinegar in every single color and one teaspoon salt. Well, actually, not a teaspoon, more like a quarter teaspoon, like a heavy pinch, a quarter teaspoon of salt in every vessel. And I am going to bring these up to the um, screen just so you can see them. So again, in the insulated glass mug, yes, it's tea and we are tea dyeing our eggs, but you have to do something to make it not just tea, but to make it a dye, to make it really stick to the egg. So the egg is going to be cooked and then chilled to room temperature or colder. And then of course, we've got our tea steeped very, very hot and then again brought to room temperature for that process. So let's start with these eggs. This is a fun one. Oh, actually, let me go in order. I wanna go in order so I don't mess this up. First of all, what's on the screen here, friends? We sell loose leaf tea and loose leaf tea is sold by weight. So you're gonna see that I'm gonna cycle through all of the flavors that I'm talking about and you're gonna see, if you're watching on Facebook specifically, that you can, um, put the different size in your cart, okay? So again, you need at least a half ounce of tea if you're gonna just even do one to two eggs. Oh, that reminds me, when you're talking about which vessel that, um, that you grabbed, 
the tea, the eggs will not color, will not absorb color where they're touching something. So this vessel was perfect for two to three eggs, but you don't want them to be so squished in your vessel that they're all touching or they plain old just won't color where they are touching. Not the biggest deal in the world, but if you're being particular about it, friends, I say this is a live video. This is not Pinterest. I don't mind if you don't mind. So the first tea we're going to talk about is blue confetti. Blue confetti has an ingredient called butterfly pea flower. It is what makes this tea blue. This particular tea, butterfly pea flower, is sold 100. It is a tisane. It's completely caffeine free. And its taste is like funfetti birthday cake. So it's vanilla. It's a sweeter vanilla tea. It does turn the color blue. I'll bring that up for you. This is actually a little more on the purple side because I added the vinegar. Do you remember? Um, so it steeped up blue, but then I added the vinegar and the salt so it turned a little purple. Now this one in particular, friends, this blue confetti does not actually have enough blue in it to make a very dark blue. If you are looking for a light colored um, turquoise or teal, this is the perfect tea for you to make this colored A. This color, though, that's blue, this is an entire teapot. This is the Classica glass blooming teapot. This I used only butterfly pea flower. I happen to have it on stock because of next week we're introducing new flavors. So it's one of the ingredients in a new flavor that we'll be introducing next week. So I used a half ounce of butterfly pea flower, and can you tell? I'm sure that you probably can't. It probably just looks black, but this is a very beautiful blue purple tea. Again, I steeped it in hot water, and it did yield this very, very blue color. Now, the blue is the result, of course, of the flower. We're an all-natural company, so everything that I use is literally an all-natural ingredient. There are no chemicals. There's no, no artificial flavors. So it's just kind of fun that a flower helped turn this um, egg blue. Now, here you're seeing on the top... I added salt to some of these and it gave it a marbled effect. Another way for you to do that is by using melted coconut oil. You put a little paintbrush or maybe a Q-tip in the coconut oil and do a little pretty design and where the coconut oil is, it won't um, accept as much color. And so it'll be more solid. So it'll be like a marbled if you do it that way. Super fun, right? Let's pop into the next one. The next one is this tea here. Now let me bring the tea up to the camera. This is rooibos tea. Rooibos is sold 101. Rooibos tea is known as the red tea. It's completely caffeine free. Rooibos grows in South Africa and it has a lot of good health benefits. It does, it is very high in antioxidants. It's known to be good for headaches, inflammation, and insomnia. And I think I said it before, this is the red rooibos tea. It is a quite brown color. It is absolutely beautiful and amber. It's very thick um, compared to how thin some of these other teas are that you'll see. And the red rooibos made this most beautiful egg. Isn't it pretty? Again, these all started out as white, regular chicken eggs, but there's a very brown color. And again, friends, as long as your tea is um, in the tea for a while, I want to talk to you about that a little bit later, about how long to leave them in to achieve the color that you want. Next up is our cranberry harvest tea. This cranberry harvest is a tisane. It's fruity. It's completely caffeine free. It does have cranberry and apples, which is why I picked it because I think you and I both associate cranberry with a very bright, vivid red color. And I picked up the Fuji glass teapot here. This is the cranberry harvest, but it's deceiving. So the tea is still in this one, actually. I didn't bother to pull it out. This has got cranberries and apples and elderberry and hibiscus. It's actually the hibiscus that is giving it the majority of the color in the teapot. 
but I failed to add enough vinegar. I didn't fail. I kind of did it on purpose because I wanted to see if it was enough to color the egg. The interesting thing about that one is it yielded this color. Isn't that interesting? It is um, not the beautiful reddish purple color that I was anticipating. Instead, I think it took more of the elderberry and the apple to the egg. And I think it might have to do with the tea, but it might also have to do with my um, adding less, less of the vinegar than it actually needed to get on some of the other ones. Very unusual, quite frankly. Who knows? Next up, next up. The next tea that we're going to talk about is a seasonal tea for us. It is available right now. This is our strawberries and cream. It is a caffeine-free, fruity to sane strawberries and cream. We have this tea in our inventory right now. Um, I'm recording this at the end of March. It is part of our spring into Easter collection. So if you're watching this on our YouTube channel in July, we might not have this flavor anymore, but we do have it now. And I pulled it specifically, not really because of the strawberries, but because well, one of the ingredients is beetroot. And I thought for sure beetroot might turn our um, eggs red. Now this is the strawberries and cream all steeped up. It is a very uh, pinkish color like strawberries, a pinkish red. It's a dark red, not an amber brown the way the rooibos is. But the interesting thing is it yielded this guy. This egg, I have to tell you, there's no pink to it. It's very tan. It's uh, a beautiful color like sand. You can see some of the marbling as I rotated the egg in the mug and how long it's steeped. This guy is still a little wet. It's so funny how they turned um, different colors with the different ingredients and the, the speckled and the marbling. I just think they're gorgeous. Next up, next up, let's talk about triple root. Now triple root is another one that I think a lot, we saw a lot of this triple root. It is extremely popular. Triple Root has ginger, turmeric, and sarsaparilla. So it's uh, three root teas, of course. It's very spicy. Turmeric is known to be good for your joints, for joint mobility. However, this is tea, okay? It's not just turmeric. Turmeric is very bright yellow, very bright. Not like saffron, a little bit darker than that. But typically, you're going to find turmeric in powder form. Typically, turmeric is very expensive. This is a triple root tea that has all those great ingredients. This is a nice golden yellow color, almost like apple juice, I suppose. Um, you can see the turmeric tea has, the turmeric actual ingredient has fallen to the bottom because it's a little heavier than the tea. Maybe you can't see it. It's on the bottom there that it fell to the bottom. And the turmeric is this one. Isn't that crazy? It is very, very brown. It is a gorgeous brown color. I love it. Um, almost like clay. Not really khaki, but um, gosh, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous brown color. But again, you might naturally assume that the turmeric would make this a very bright yellow, but that's if you were only using turmeric. Our tea obviously has multiple ingredients, including pepper, which helps with the absorption of the other ingredients to make sure your joints feel good. Next up, let's talk about elderberry. Elderberry is next. Elderberry is sold 105. This is elderberry tea and I call it elderberry tea, but friends, this is one single ingredient. Elderberries are really good for your immune system. So years ago, we decided to start selling just elderberries and letting you decide if you want to add elderberries, you can add it to every single cup of tea that you drink throughout your day because it's so good for you. So we do have it in multiple flavors, but of course we sell it by itself. Again, I think everyone knows that elderberries are very dark purple. And uh, this is the tea. It looks probably in the camera, I'm kind of assuming it's gonna look inky black to you. 
um, I have an overhead light and I can tell that it's this beautiful purple color. It is very purple. It is not black um, from my point of view without the camera lens in between. And this one, no, yes, this one is the elderberry. Isn't that curious? Love it. Oh, and um, I will say that, again, there's marbling, and I think that has a lot to do with how long you let it in the tea, okay? So I personally had let these soak for three hours. It was just kind of what I was doing with my day. I put all the eggs into the tea, and I just walked away, quite frankly. It's the amount of time that I had. This egg in particular is actually still wet, which I think is really unusual. I had let them out for about an hour to dry because I knew I was going to be picking them up for the camera. It is what it is. Anyway, I think the elderberry is interesting. It's nice and dark and absolutely beautiful. Next up, oh, this one. Oh, this really, this makes me laugh. Jelly beans is next. Jelly beans. This is a green tea. This is seasonal. This is part of our spring into Easter collection. This tea, as soon as you open the bag, I swear you are going to know that it's jelly beans tea. So this has a lot of great notes to it. It's cherries and strawberries and oranges and mango. It does have hibiscus. It is a green tea. So it's a lot of different ingredients that could lend it themselves to coloring an Easter egg. And it turned out turquoise. That just blows my mind. I rotated this um, as I was walking through the kitchen because these were in, let me show you. These were in the shallow bowls. I kind of ran out of teapots too because I was doing 13. It's like more than I had. So this whiter section was faced up the longest and then I kept rotating the egg. So the part of the egg that's the darkest was definitely down in. So that's just a reminder that if you're looking for a rainbow variation, you can rotate the egg and leave it exposed to some air. But if you want something um, more evenly coated, make sure it is completely covering the egg. Again, this was just a dish that I had in my house. But if I had something taller and longer that would completely cover the egg, it would be completely covered. Next up, I was curious to kind of find out the difference between plain green tea and a green tea with lemon. For some reason, I was curious. I really thought that lemon would change the color of the eggs. And in my opinion, it did. I don't know if it translates well into the camera, but this one is my lemon meringue. Again, I rotated it. So this is the lemon meringue. And then this is plain green tea. Plain green tea. It is by far a brighter yellow. It is more yellow than any of the other eggs that we have. It's a very golden color and I just think it's completely gorgeous. So this one is the lemon meringue that I have on the screen and the other one, the one that actually turned out quite yellow is the sencha. So I think this is beautiful. I mean sencha. I was thinking to myself that some of these ingredients by themselves are kind of expensive that you wouldn't want to use too much tea and do if you had four dozen eggs to color you might not want to use um, an expensive ingredient but sencha is extremely affordable so is the rooibos i mean this is very an affordable tea it does taste good but i wanted you to know that even if you didn't have plain sencha or you didn't have the lemon meringue tea that i have if you had another green tea, I'm suspecting that it's going to turn out like this. So very pleased with those results. And I did want to bring up the next one, <clears throat> which is the breakfast blend. Breakfast blend is plain black tea. It's a salon. And that came out this one, this beautiful brown. So this is breakfast blend, which is black tea. And then I'll compare that, which in my, from my point of view, they're exactly the same. So breakfast blend is this one. The rooibos, the red rooibos is this one. This is the actual tea plant. This is not the tea plant. It's an herbal. It's not the tea plant at all. But it is a plant that we use in the tea world. 
So beautiful, beautiful brown eggs. Oh yes, and I wanted to talk to you about the matcha one too, because again, I was really intrigued by it. I really can't tell you what went wrong here. I was expecting a great green. I don't know if I didn't um, whisk the matcha in enough hot water. I don't know if I used too much, if I used too little, if it all sank to the bottom. I don't know, but this is a really fun end result. It is a very light color green, which if you're going through pastel colors and you don't want the darker colors in your Easter basket, matcha would be the way to go because as we know, the plain green tea, the sencha, makes it look yellow. So this is matcha and you know I did add vinegar and salt to my cup of matcha, which is interesting. Um, but it gave it this really like marbled, colored, speckled, which is hysterical because if you know what matcha is, it's powder. And I just think it's so great that I literally have matcha powder on the outside of my eggs. I'm pretty excited about this one. I think this is a pretty neat experiment. But again, I was expecting a brighter green color and it didn't work out that way. And I'm okay with that. Kind of fun. Kind of fun. Now, friends, we do have, like I said, in the queue, I do have all of the different tea accessories that I used and brought up. Dawn says that her favorites are the blue and the yellow. Aren't they pretty together? Gosh, what a beautiful Easter basket, right? And Kim says this looks so fun. Interesting that the eggs colors don't always turn out the same as the tea. I know, right? I mean, it is what it is. But I will say that I literally do have a friend who's a fabric artist. She sews for a living. She gets this gorgeous um, fabric in that's very stark black and white. It is shockingly black and white. And she tea dyes the fabric, you know, in her big stainless steel work tub. She uses real tea to actually tea dye her fabric. And it comes out um, a beautiful, like an aged vintage brown that gets marbled through the fabric and it's gorgeous and I love knowing that real people do use these techniques for different things and hopefully this will inspire you to do a you know a few fun things with your tea in the kitchen I don't see any other questions um, at this point, but friends, if I don't get to your questions or comments while I'm live, if this is on Facebook, I will get a notification, so don't hesitate to ask. If you're bringing new to Sub Rosa Tea, welcome. Thanks for watching the video. Feel free to uh, spill the tea and let your friends know if you saw or heard anything interesting in this video. We absolutely love it when you tell your friends and family about us or groups if you are permitted to do so. And honestly, I'll get back to you if I can, but if you're brand new, download the app. You get 15% off your very first in-app purchase by using the code NEW15. So thank you, friends. Thank you so much for watching today's video. Happy Easter if you celebrate and, you know, hey, hard-boiled eggs, they're fun all, the year, all year round, right? Thank you for watching. No matter what you do with the rest of your day, I hope you have yourself a cup of tea and take care of you. Bye-bye, friends.